We're here in front of the Ambassador Lounge in Portland, Oregon to hold a vigil for Jacqueline Julita Anderson and her girlfriend uh, Barbara Gilpin who were murdered here in February of 1998. Uh, the story, and I'm going to put a link in this video to um, uh, a good accounting of the story, uh, basically uh, goes like this. Uh, Jacqueline was uh, here with um, the, who ended up being the killer, her ex-boyfriend, um, to basically, she had been going back and forth with seeing him and, and, and being involved with him, and she was here to tell, to break the news to him that she uh, was going to go back to her girlfriend Barbara officially as her relationship, um, formal relationship, and not basically have any relations with him anymore. And um, he ended up leaving the bar, Barbara showed up here um, at the bar, and um, uh, Jacqueline and Barbara, you know, were just here together enjoying themselves for uh, the evening after he left. He came back with his shotgun, and he uh, killed both of them, basically blowing both of their brains out um, inside the bar, um, before disappearing to a field where he ended up uh, being found um, with his throat slit, apparently most likely trying to then end his own life. Um, and so we're here to, to remember both um, Jacqueline and Barbara. And, um, you know, this type of a murder is all too common, where women um, who choose to be in relationships with women over men cause men to um, become aggressive and do violent acts. Um, and in this case, the, the worst kind. So we're going to go over and hold vigil with the candle uh, across the street here. So I'd like to introduce you here to Ben Strothman, who's here with me, who actually lives in New York City and happened to be here in the Portland area uh, this weekend. And he's joining me uh, with this vigil, which is just an honor to have you here to, to share this experience um, to remember these two women. Inside uh, at the very end there to go use the restroom and I came out um, and Ben was talking with a, a man outside. And the man had heard that we were um, doing a vigil and he was um, asking about, about what we were doing and who we were remembering here um, and Ben was sharing that information with the gentleman and when I came outside we started talking, the three of us, and, um, and of course he was very happy about what we were doing and remembering um, the two women that, that were murdered. 
here, and he said he lives a few blocks away, and he had never heard of the murder, and he was a gay man, he identified as a gay man, and then he told us a little bit about himself, and he, he said um, that uh, he actually was just kicked out of his apartment with uh, his partner of several years um, tonight. Ten years. Ten years tonight, he was kicked out uh, of his apartment, he had all of his stuff in his car, and um, apparently his partner's mother died, and he his partner's inherited a large sum of money and um, didn't go into any more details than that but he was really starting to get emotional um, just that we intersected with him tonight and um, so it just it, it's another example of not only are we able to share these stories um, and really validate the reality of what's happening to LGBT people in this country and has been happening for a long time and is still happening. Um, and that's good to get that information out there because we need to know these stories of the people that we've lost. Um, but in the process, these random meetings, or maybe they're not random, I don't know, of people that are going through stuff, real deep stuff right now, um, are able to, to happen. And um, he was... Uh, He's very happy that we crossed paths tonight, and I hope as we saw him drive away with all his stuff in the back seat of his car, whatever he's going through, um, you know, I hope we did bring light to his, his life that will actually help him beyond tonight in um, this major transition that he's actually in the middle of right in this moment.